Let's take a quick look at um, the differences between these, these ways of practicing consulting, mentoring, teaching and training, counselling, uh, therapies and anything else now. Um, very briefly, I think it's pretty clear, isn't it, the difference between coaching and consulting. Any, any questions around that for you guys? Is there anything that sort of feels unsure? What we do find is a lot of consultants will use coaching because coaching is a skill that fits in very nicely with consulting, but they are different because as a consultant, you're looking to provide a solution, looking to provide an answer. Mentoring, teaching and training. What do you think the difference is there? I think all three of those are different to start with. They are. <laughs> they are. Um, they certainly are. Why do you think I've combined them into one, though, apart from just time? <laughs> because I think it's about yeah. imparting. Yeah, exactly. All three, there's an assumption, isn't it? All three have knowledge or experience that, that directs the, the quality of the outcome for somebody. In coaching, we don't assume that to be the case other than the process of coaching. So sometimes people will say, what's the difference between a mentor and a coach? And it feels really obvious to me. And when I say something, I mean, I literally know coaches who have been coaches for 20 years who still say to me, there's no difference. I'm like, really? What world are you living in? Like, I'm, I could not, what do you do for a living? Um, Finance director. I could not mentor you on being a finance director. I just simply could not do that, but I could coach you. And to me, that's such an obvious distinction that I'm surprised that people still don't get that. As a mentor, you have to have walked that path in some way, shape or form. I need to have been a finance director who's ahead of the curve for you, that you would get value from me. But as a coach, no problem at all. I could be the worst finance person in the world and still coach you because I don't need to have the skill of being a finance director. By the way, Great job, I like finance directors. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions on mentoring, teaching, training? Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's get to these two then. Counseling and therapies. I find that if we just tie these together for a second. From this morning's session so far, what's your feel of the difference between coaching, counseling and therapies? Gut feel, like what's coming up for you? Therapy goes into the past. Probably. It can do, doesn't always. So if you look at, say, psychoanalytic coaching, uh, counselling or therapy, for sure it does. If you look at existential therapy, it doesn't. If you look at CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy, it doesn't. So, so it's interesting. When I, when I grew up as a coach, we were always taught counselling and therapy look at the past, coaching looks at the future. Simply not true. In reality, it can be true, but it's not as clear-cut as that. But it's great. Yeah, Thank you. Some do, for sure. Yeah. So the past has an element to it. The lines are very blurred. Let me give you a, a really extreme example, because I think sometimes extremes kind of show up, the subtlety, if you like. So I told you I had a person that came to me who said they were going to commit suicide. The only reason I, I even saw that person was a therapist said that she felt I could just do something for her in the hour. So, and she, the therapist literally sent her down the road to see me. I, I, it wasn't like she had booked to see me. The therapist said, go and see this person. Um, so over here, there's person, somebody who wants to commit suicide, right? Over here, there's somebody who wants to grow their business, let's say, by 500%. Where is this person who wants to grow their business going to go to a coach or a therapist? Coach. And where's this person who's going to, who wants to commit suicide likely the most benefit coach or therapist? So at the extremes, we feel the difference. It's what happens is as we come in and we hit this gray zone, that's where we're not quite sure what it might be. Now, my sense is that in this middle here, you could either see a therapist or a coach, and it could be either would be perfectly good for you. There's something in the middle, which is around getting, about being confused about what your life is and how you want to move forward, etc., which is where we operate as a school. We're not really, it doesn't mean our coaches never do performance coaching, but really as a school, we're here. We're in this gray zone, which is about what is it to be human today? And that could definitely flip to therapy, and it can definitely flip to coaching. So I think that the, where I've come to after 18 years of thinking about this is that I think it's about stuckness. What is the level of stuckness or the readiness for change that somebody's engaging in this zone with? My experience is that when somebody's very, very stuck, coaching's not the thing for them. Because coaching assumes a readiness for, chi for shift and change. It is exploratory, but it's exploratory with the assumption that change is going to take place. Sometimes therapy and counselling are exploratory with the assumption that awareness is going to be risen first and foremost, and that's enough in itself. So I think it's a grey zone, and my ultimate conclusion is it's less about what we do or more, more about who we see, i.e. what's the client group that we're seeing? Readiness for change, non-readiness for change. Having said that, I did some research recently where I interviewed a load of therapists who are also coaches. Uh, they're the, the combining both and said, hey, what do you think the difference is? I interviewed about 
10 people. I've still got a few more to interview. I'm doing a paper called um, Neighboring Worlds, the difference between coaching and therapy. And um, I interviewed about 10 people. Guess what they all said? Different stuff. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, even within that world, nobody can agree on the difference. So I'm okay with the fact that I can't give you a definitive answer. My personal experience has been that it's about stuckness. Somebody else might say it's about the past versus the future. Somebody else might say it's about power versus non-power. Or somebody else might say it's tools versus non tools It doesn't matter too much. I think as a, as a profession, we're becoming more and more melded together. And I think the future beckons where we will lose the distinctions within that middle zone. We might keep them here, but in that middle zone, we'll start to lose those distinctions. And I think we need to be okay with that. It's what I would call the safe uncertainty zone. I know that some of the clients I see could definitely see a therapist. And I know that people who see therapists could definitely see me. And I'm okay with the fact that we're in that, that funny gray zone. I think it's where Animas is moving to. And I think it's where the world is moving to. Because we recognize it. You're just human, first and foremost.